Yeah, uh, this is Ray Bang Man Hill. Please uh, press the like button and subscribe. Yeah, um, when I was in the foot rocket, yeah, we used to be real. I mean, I used to be really, really leery, you know what I mean? Because young boy in the foot market, uh, Dr. Martin Boots, you know, and the old turn ups and staples turn ups and little t shirts and a bib and a hat, you know. I was to always wear a hat, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, not really, yeah, but I used to wear the old uh, flat cap. Everybody wore a flat cap in the market, and I was a bit leery bouncing about because I was with Colin Cracknell. And uh, as I say, Colin Cracknell was uh, one of the governors of the foot market. We was always fighting in there. You got, and you had and you had Martin Wells, old Dirk Pierce. Had every, I mean, Wellses, Wellses. I mean, all them people in the market could have a right fight. But I was leery. I didn't give a monk. I didn't care. I didn't care about who they were or what they were. And I used to fight all the time in the market. It didn't bother me about names and all that. I was just used to fight, you yeah? know. Because I loved it. I loved the fighting game, yeah. And uh, Colin Crackle sent me one day, uh, do you want to come out Come out one night? You know what I mean? I said, yeah, love it. Love it, mate. And he went to a place called Bobo's. Anybody remember Bobo's at London Airport? Uh, nightclub. And I used to go there. And uh, yeah, Chicky Summers, Elfie Summers. All the Summers used to go there. Chicky Puddles, Puddles, puck, uh, Puddles, Chick, Chick Puddles. Yeah, there's been a lot, lot of people in there, murders, just have murders in there, mate. I was fighting. I mean, when I went in there, I was very quiet, you know. Once you start start getting to know people, crack the week, bouncing about me and Colin and all that, and I had quite a few fights in the, in, in the Bobos, and uh, I got barred. I got a big bar up there, mate. I wasn't uh, allowed nowhere near it. And I remember around the corner from Bobos, they had the Skyline, the Skyline Hotel, and... One day we was going by, and it was it. They put his, they they uh, just put his jewelers in sky and outside the skyline on the corner of the skyline by the car park. And I went to myself, one day that's going to be done, mate. It's such an easy bit of work, you know what I mean? And what do they do? They reverse the van in there. They had about six people in the back of the van. They reverse the back the van back into the skyline jewelers. Reverse it and jumps out the back and robbed the whole lot and drove off. Yeah, but we knew you could see. That it was a bit of work that could be easy done, you know. How we never got involved with that, I don't know, because we was doing plenty of villainy then, doing robberies and all this, that, and the other. And uh, I remember this, this one day, uh, me and about four or five bought my pals, uh, we was doing robberies, you know, a bit naughty ones as well, yeah. And we went to this place in Uxbridge and by this church, you know. And we'd noticed it a couple of times that Security Express, the big yellow van, yeah, with a door at the side, big door at the side, they was to stand by the door and chuck big bags across the road to, a, to one security guard, and they chuck it to the guy in the door going into the bank, yeah? And we watched it and watched it and watched it, and one day I went, it's got to go, this, mate, it's ridiculous, you know what I mean? It's got to go. So we went to, go, went to do it, and uh, I was standing by the, the church, and uh, my mates was outside the bank, and my, my, the one that is a bit there in it is a bit of a what is a bit wide. He's a bit of a wide boy. It's only young, but game. He went into the bank with an air thing, and uh, once they put that bag across the road, went to the guy on the door. He held the guy at the door, dragged him out to the guy, up, and the van. Obviously, they shut that door, but they had to get it open because you got the guy. So I'm standing by the church. Uh, Watching for me to come across, uh, you know, for the, for the nod, for me to come across, do what I've got to do. All of a sudden, out comes the church. What is it? Old Bill. It's full of Old Bill. It's an Old Bill winning. They've all come out of their little brand new um, Old Bill uniforms. You know, I couldn't believe it, mate. I went to my mate, bob, 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 bob. that means on top, yeah? I like that. I went, more leave it, you know, walks across the road on top, like, they thought. That it was okay to go. Of course, a guy chucked a bag across the road. As he's gone to the bank, my mate's got him. He's got the bag. I went, it's on top, mate, go. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, um, my mate won. But as he won, he dropped the bag, you know? And it was two on top, mate. You couldn't have, really, it was two on top for us. But we tried to pick the bag, he's gone. It was, it had to go, yeah? Just to leave it, went. We can all come back another day and survive. You know, why, why, why be silly with it, yeah? left the bag and uh, you know this i mean that was a big bit of work that was mate that had come to 100, 100 grand in, in them days 
that was a lot of money, you know what I mean? And we missed it. And we missed out on it. I mean, we was doing bits of work, silly bits of work, really, but getting a living. Uh, me, Martin, and a few other people in the market, that was what we used to do. Just go, go bits of work when we had time. You know, and, and being in the market, you've got plenty of time, you know what I mean? But that, anyway, and um, I used to go down Twickenham quite a lot. And as I say, I used to work in the club down there. And this is, uh, and one day, um, uh, Wally said to me, he's got a club around the corner. Uh, it's a sort of like a late, a late drinking club. And would you go around and, and, and look after it? I went, yeah, yeah, no problem. So it was me and another guy uh, looked after the club. And uh, I'm inside, the guy's outside, yeah? And all of a sudden, he's like, pressed this button, and the, light, and the lights start flashing, I walk to the front, and it's this Lee Belfield geezer, this Lee Belfield. And he used to be a doorman, you know, a bit of a, bit of a big lump. And he's giving it all the lodge on the door that he wants to come in. And we're saying, you can't come in, mate, it's, uh, it's full up, you can't come in. I work on the doors, this, and I work on the doors, that, you know. And you've got to understand this is what we do, this, that, and the other. He says, you ain't coming in, mate. And it was definitely at Lee Belfield. I can remember the picture. And uh, my mate said, you're not coming in, mate. No way. You're not coming in. And he's with another guy, another big, big gypsy guy, big gypsy guy, about six foot four, big. He's about 20 odd stone, big fat, yeah. This Lee Belfield ain't that, ain't that nothing to look at. So he says, you ain't coming in, mate. He says, he says that. go away, mate. You ain't coming in. Go away. Well, all of a sudden, my mum went crash. He hit that Lee Belfold on the chin, I swear. That Lee Belfold went over like a, like a sack of taters. The big geezer, that he was with, the big fat geezer, pooed himself. He pooed himself, right? He went, leave off, leave off, mate. And this Lee Belfold was sparkle on the floor. Sparkle. But my mate, the other doorman, he's a bit of a nasty geezer to, 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 to play with, you know what I mean? And he just walked up and kicked him about four or five times in the face as Lee Belford. If we'd have known what we know now about the geezer and what he'd done to them girls, I would swear to God, right, we'd have took him around the corner because the Thames was just next door to it, yeah? And we'd have put him in the Thames, mate. He, he just drowned. We'd have just fucking pulled him in the Thames. Big overcoat and just chucked him in. You know what I mean? But uh, obviously you find out these things later on in life. But he'd have gone, that Lee Belfort, without a shadow of doubt, mate, he'd have gone. I mean, what he'd done to them girls is no one's business, you know what I mean? Young girls, mate, raping and doing what he's done to them kids, yeah? But, I mean, come on, out, out. it's mad. And do you know what a lot of it is? Do you know what I mean? A lot of these people on, on the roids, it make, they, they go crazy on this fucking thing, you know what I mean? They think they're like, invincible, and uh, the steroids do certain things to them, make them... Makes the testosterone go crazy, you know what I mean? Anyway, and I believe it is a lot of it to do with that as well, mind you. Also, I believe that he was that way inclined anyway. Um, and I don't think he'll ever get out of prison. He shouldn't, he'll never get out of prison, this geezer, for what he did. And the big geezer that was with him, uh, this big 22 stone, big fat, fat travelling fella, whether or not he was in, like, he's one of them ones that was in, with him. Doing whatever he was doing, I don't know. But the big kids didn't want to know, mate. His also fell out. Yeah, he did not. He did not want to know. Yeah. But my mate hit Lee Belford on the chin. When he went over like that, my mate steamed it and gave him a few kicks in the head. I mean, it disgusts you. You know, when when you're told about it. I mean, I've, I've only just been told about it. You know, we had a little talk with my pals, and he said, "Do you remember this? Do you remember that?" And, I, and it takes, as I said, it takes a bit of time. For me to remember things, not I've had a few punches to the head, you know what I mean? It's, just, it's a bit awkward, it's a bit hard to remember sometimes. But some, when someone gives you that little bit more of a kick in the head, you get to remember more things, you know what I mean? And um, I'm really gutted, I just said I'm only gutted that uh, we didn't know what we all know now, and uh, we'd have just drowned him, mate. He'd have gone in the Thames, and that'd have been his lot, yeah. We wouldn't have mucked about something like, something like that, you don't muck about, you know what I mean? As I say, when I was uh, in Wally's club around the corner, the wine, the, the bar around the corner, I've never really had a lot of trouble in there. Um, there was two brothers uh, that used to go in there that was uh, that, that were bad, yeah. The Aaron and Boyne, there was a bit out. You couldn't muck about with them two, mate. There was, um, they were proper. They were proper gangsters. I mean, they was like, 
they were the, the, the they were uh, the, the number ones around that area, you know. And uh, you had Colin Barrett. I mean, me and Colin Barrett, um, we fell out of a few things. Me and Colin, um, but Colin was a kickboxing champion. He had a big gym in Slough, kickboxers and all that game. And uh, I fancy that I done Colin Barrett. I mean. That showed that he was a bit of an apple Colin. I think he sort of like was one of the ones that around Hounslow felt more around there was the governor there. But I like, I mean, I, mean, I liked him, but it, sometimes it comes to it come it comes to a thing that um, you know me and him was going to have it. He was knocking about with a guy called Andy. I forget the guy's name, Andy now, but he's uh, he was one of the first guys to do a, a, a music thing on on the radio, on media and all that. He's I think he become a millionaire doing that, yeah. I forget his name, Andy something, uh, but people were doing my podcast, you know, but Colin Barrett, I mean, good money getter, mate. I mean, you know, perfect, this geezer, cause, I mean, he could get a power note just coming out of his bed. But me and Colin fell out a few times. It did look like we was going to have a fight. Uh, my mate, I've marked his card. He said, listen, do a sort of favour, don't fight no rail, mate. He's too strong, too powerful for you. You know what I mean? You, you know, he will bat you, you know what I mean? But, Colin could have a fight. He was a good kickboxer, mate. He was a good kickboxer. He won sort of, He won a lot of titles, Colin. You know, and he won. A, he won a mug. But even so, he wasn't a mug. I fancy I could. But anyway, it wasn't really a battle that really. All that beat. But I mean, he had a fight. Uh, this is what killed him. Um, I know Colin was on all sorts of drugs. Uh, he had a fight um, in a pub at a wedding uh, with some travellers. Um, Colin has done about four or five of them. And so he went round the corner to another pub, and uh, then the travellers they all come in the pub, and uh, he got hit on the chin, Colin, or something like that. One done, someone done him something, and knocked his spark out, went on the floor, and he died. He died on on the floor, and when they checked him out, his heart was twice the size of it should have been. Yeah, massive. His heart was twice the size, and they reckon it was a uh, an OD on drugs. He overdosed on drugs. It was the drugs that killed him rather than the bang, bang to the head, yeah? So he must have suffocated on whatever he did, yeah? But Colin Barrett, uh, rest in peace, Colin. I mean, him fell out a few times, obviously, he didn't have a fight. But it was all over, always over my ass, Colin. It was always over my ass, Colin. Uh, we was always uh, doing deals. I mean, me and Colin uh, earned a few pennies with Andy. And, uh, but I don't know if Colin has anything to do with a picture that shot my dog, um, or whatever. But Colin, actually, I was told that Colin knows the picture that shot my dog. Um, when Colin died, uh, then people told me that, yeah, Colin Barrett knew who shot your dog. So whether or not Colin Barrett was involved in it, I don't know. Uh, but, I mean, so, you know, lots of people say this, lots of people say that, and it's all hearsay, who say or what say, yeah? So whether that was true, I don't know. But uh, I've never ever got to find out about my dog. I've had bits and pieces, people said this, people said that, but we don't know, you know what I mean? And, um, but as I said, there was two guys around that area, Aaron and Boyne, they was, I mean, I knew their dad, Aaron and Boyne, that, their dad very well, he used to come in the market, it was Colin Crackle's uh, mate, and uh, and Terry was his mate, and the, the old man was a diamond, the old man was under the spot, you could see the old man was an handful, you know what I mean? And I remember the boys coming in as kids, but they've grown up to be proper gangsters, mate, proper dangerous, dangerous people, yeah? So a lot of people know on my podcast who they are, and they're just dangerous, mate. I mean, the Adams is dangerous, but these people are just more dangerous, yeah? And uh, they don't muck about it. They're like ninjas. They're like ninjas. They're proper, mate. Anyway, uh, I was talking to him about, uh, talking about me and Joe Smith. You know, Joe Smith will do the podcast uh, very soon um, about fighters and dangerous people. And uh, just listen to that when he comes out, as that'll be next week, hopefully. And it'll uh, be a good podcast, me and Joe Smith, yeah? Anyway, uh, please press the like button and subscribe, and have a nice day, yeah? Bye-bye.